Do you train in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and want to know what kind of resistance training program you should follow? Watch this. Our next caller is James from Pennsylvania. What's up, James? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you all for uh, taking my call. Um, so I have a couple questions. Um, <clears throat> I, I'm sure they're not unique to me that I fall into a category of people that, that, that all have the same thing they're dealing with. Um, so I've been relatively athletic my whole life. I started wrestling seventh grade or so, um, been weightlifting for about 25 years, um, spent most, most of my life in public service, uh, spent six years in the Marine Corps and I'm currently in law enforcement. Um, so my fitness goals have been primarily performance driven. I've done very little, uh, to focus on aesthetics or anything else like that. Um, and then on top of that, I do jujitsu and I know that, uh, Sal's a purple belt, and he's got a, uh, a, a background it. in this as well. I was. So I knew it was going to come up, so I thought I was <laughs> You can see how to get that out of the way. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, James, you yeah, said it first. Just that. throw it out there. Yeah, yeah. Adam and um, Justin are white belts, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I ain't <laughs> so so I, I'm trying to do BJJ about two to three times a week because for, for my work, I find it to be something that's really imperative for – managing stress of, of physical conflict when I'm trying to take somebody into custody that doesn't really want to be. Um, and, you know, those skills and stress management have, you know, helped me a lot. Um, so, so, so to me, it's more than just a hobby. It, it's, it's something that's really important to, you know, my longevity in the career and the, and the people that I serve. Um, so that's kind of my big rock that I'm focusing on right now. Um, so what I'm looking for is I'm, I'm trying to figure out my approach for continuing fitness training. Um, uh, to supplement jujitsu, to supplement my work, um, you know, because for me, it, it's it's all about performance and, and and what it looks like. It's 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 go, it, it's go, not show. Um, then on top of that, my wife and I do a lot of hiking and um, backpacking, and we're going to the Grand Canyon in a couple months, and we're going to hike out there for a week and. So I need to, you know, keep up my stamina and my endurance and all of those things as well. So I just wanted to get your take on it and see what you think. Yeah, no, good question. Well, First off, yeah. I, uh, I want to thank you for your service. Yeah, we really appreciate law enforcement. The work I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so jujitsu two to three days a week, right? Um, That's my goal. Okay. If you're doing jujitsu two days a week, you can probably get away with two days a week of, of resistance training. If you're doing three days a week, it would be one day a week of resistance training. It's, uh, hmm. it's a, it's a trap we tend to fall into where we want to be able to work out all the time. I know how, yeah. I know how demanding jujitsu is. I'm assuming your, your classes are probably two to two and a half hours long. Is that correct? No. So these classes, they're roughly an hour to hour and a half. How, how long is the sparring session? The sparring usually, session? yeah, usually 20 to 30 minutes at the end. Okay. That's okay. not too, too bad. I'd still stick yeah. to what I say. I'd go, if you're doing three days a week of jujitsu, one day a week of resistance training or two days a week too. So four days a week total of structured exercise. As far as your workouts are concerned, you can keep it really basic um, and focus on four or five traditional exercises or MAPS performance. The workouts and MAPS performance that's would be very complimentary. That's where I was going to push it. Yeah. MAPS performance. And then if you were going to add any more to it would be some of the mobility days, I think would comp complement what he's doing phenomenal. Yeah, I oh, think you'd, you'd be perfect doing that because I, I know jujitsu okay. would be really demanding again. And so I think sometimes we're tempted to throw more workouts on it. It took me a while to learn this lesson. I was in my 20s. And I had to really scale back on my strength training in order to uh, really improve my performance in jujitsu. I was just doing too much. Yeah. But yeah, you can. Gotcha. We'll, we'll, if you don't have mass performance, we'll send it to you. And what you no, want? I've do got is, it. I appreciate that though. Oh, perfect. Go. So pick the foundational workouts in there and use those as your workouts and the mo mobility sessions you could do every day if you want. Yeah. I really think okay. mass performance is your hub. And, and so based on what your performance goals are and like keeping up with, uh, you know, all the movement and all the, uh, you know, strength and demands. Like I, if I were to stack this out and like put it together, it'd be like mass performance. We go into like something like an anabolic or, uh, even aesthetic and then go into strong and then sort of repeat that cycle is something that I would probably, you know, you could almost do that as, as, more of a focus on performance or even i don't know what do you guys think he could, about he that? could, he yeah. could be even i would power lift. i would leave him indefinitely in performance with these goals his his goal is primarily related to performance his job and bjj so to yeah. me that would be the center and then performance is really to complement what he's doing and so to me it really looks like maps performance ran over and over yeah. right now either one to two days a week and i would just and i would 
dictate one to two days a week based off of the volume of either Brazil, your jiu-jitsu and or whatever you're doing, like if you're doing hikes. Like let's say it's a week and maybe you only get to BJJ one time that week. Okay, well then, you know, maybe we do two times of performance that week and then and a mobility day or something. Yeah. Or let's say it's a high volume day of or a week of uh, BJJ and you do three times that week and it was intense and maybe you also did like a hike with your wife on the weekend. I mean, I'm only going to let you do performance one time that week. So you have the ability to kind of mold it around what else you're doing, but it would it would bounce between either one day a week or two days a week and do your best to be objective with yourself and go like, okay, am I, did I, am I just overreaching a little bit or am I giving my body just what it needs? And what, what you should see is really good progress in the gym and, and let that be your guiding, your guiding star, right? If you see yourself regressing in weight and you've been consistent with your, you know, training and eating, maybe you're doing too much. If, uh, it, so you can kind of play with that back and forth between the one to two days a week based off of what you're seeing as far yeah. as your return. Well, Justin brought up map strong, you know, map strong would actually be really good for jujitsu as well. Do you have map? Strong? Yeah. I want to give you something for free. Do you have map strong? I do. Unfortunately, I've got like all of your guys' stuff. So <laughs> wow. I appreciate it though. Hey, that's no, great, no, nothing yeah. unfortunate about well, that. Well, we want to <laughs> draw it out for like a year. You know? like, figure <laughs> well, it out. Yeah, I, so and that's and that's part of my problem. It's like I look at everything. I'm like, yeah, that's it. No, that's what I want to do. And yeah. and I get a little ADD on on my programming. Yeah. And and then on top of that, I have a little bit of like body dysmorphia. So I'm never quite where I want to be. Um, so. Uh, I'm struggling a little bit. Yeah, no, strong, strong, strong and performance yeah. will both be good. And, and you know, here, here's the thing, too, with the training that you're doing. You got to think – there's two things I want you to consider. I want you to, A, consider am I able to do my job while I'm training this way, okay? Because right. y- you know that your job is probably made up of a lot of boring and then every once in a while real intense, hard, physical shit, right? Exactly. So, so what you don't want to do is push yourself to the limit. So if you were a jiu-jitsu athlete, you could push yourself to the limit all the time because the, then you're, the rest of the day you're sitting at a desk on a computer or something. But you don't right. have that capability. you got to keep yourself safe. So right. think to yourself, can I also do my job while I'm doing this training week in and week out? So that's number one. And then number two, consider that this is long term because you might be able to get, mm-hmm. you might be able to get away with you know more resistance training and more jiu-jitsu all at once. But you're not going to be able to get away with that for that long. And you might be able to tolerate it, but that doesn't mean it's ideal for you. So looking at – that's why I said to you, you know, if you do jujitsu, you know, three days a week, you're only going to lift once. You might Mm -hmm. be able to do more, but I don't think it'll put you in a good position for your daily work, nor will it be a a good long-term approach. Yeah, just monitor that and scale your volume accordingly based on how your body responds and and gives you feedback. Not to mention your main goal is performance. And I'll tell you right now, if you're doing jujitsu three times a week and doing a foundational day or two a week, and you're going to be fit, you're going to be strong, you're going to be able to perform just like you want. So if that's what your goal is, like I think you can achieve that through that. And here's the thing too. So now that I know you have all the programs, you're obviously familiar uh, with the stuff that we talk about. You know, th- although we recommend everybody, you know, go through all the programs exactly how we've written so you can kind of experience it, we- we've always encouraged people to be able to mold. There is nothing that says you can't run, you know, one day a week of performance for a few months and then you run strong for a month or two and mm-hmm. pull, you know, if there's certain workouts in there or movements, like I love strong because there's things like the circus press that I really like. And, mm-hmm. you know, exercises that we haven't programmed snatch in other programs. Yeah, yeah. Snatch grip deadlifts. There's some neat movements Carry. that I, I like. There's nothing that, that says you can't kind of bounce between those. Uh, and, and you, you can do that. Like we wrote them for people so they don't have to do that. But if you feel mm-hmm. confident in your ability to kind of read like how how you're pushing yourself, you could absolutely, you know, interchange some of those those workouts if you if you want to follow one of them for a couple of weeks or a month and then switch to yeah. another program. Now, James, I also noticed Got in your it. question, you in the question that you wrote and sent into us that you talked about being on TRT. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about that? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. How now how long have you been doing that? So that's been about a year. So so what happened with me was um, I was I was working in in an area that uh, was relatively high crime, um, a lot of violence and nonsense like that, and I found myself getting like these little mini depressions, low energy, um, and uh, all of the indicators of low T. But I just attributed it to my time in the military or yeah. the the nonsense I was dealing with. I'm like, well, they're just this just just must be how I'm dealing with it, and. Um, but I was listening to you guys and uh, I was like, you know what, maybe it's worth just getting checked 
So my, my testosterone was down below 400. Um, and you know, so it's been about a, been about a year now since I've, I've been on a, a TRT, um, therapy and, it's been a game changer, an absolute game changer. Yeah, no, it totally is. I had the same experience. Um, so it, the, what I was going to recommend is this, because I've seen, you know, before we started working with uh, the people at mphormones.com, we were courted by a lot of these therapy clinics. And I was shocked at the, the difference in how some would treat versus others. And one of the main reasons why we chose, uh, you know, MP hormones was because they were not, they were not afraid to prescribe more testosterone or even uh, human, you know, grade prescription anabolics to people who might benefit from them because there's a lot of the, the you know, the old propaganda, right, that we got when anabolic steroids became, you know, like marijuana became part of kind of, you know, uh, public enemy number one type of deal. So, so the, and, and, and here's, here's where I think higher doses of testosterone and or anabolics may be a value. Number one, based off of feel. Some people feel better so long as all the numbers come back okay. They feel better with higher doses. And then number two, people whose lives and jobs uh, require more physical um, capabilities and more resilience, right? So as a law enforcement officer, officer you fall in that category. So um, if you're interested, you could go to mphormones.com. You could set up an appointment, have them evaluate what, what you're doing, and then see if there's anything different. Because I, like I said, I have some friends now who've done this who are in similar positions to you, and they've added a little bit of like nandrolone, for example. Very low dose, but enough okay. to keep the joints yeah. feeling good and they have better performance. Now, if you're sitting at a desk all day long, probably not that big of a deal. But if you're, you know, you're doing what you're doing, and every once in a while, it's life or death. This is where I think you know going with somebody who's not afraid to prescribe a little more might be a, might be a good idea. I'll check it out. All right, thanks thanks for calling in, James. I appreciate it. Hey, thank you guys. I appreciate your time. No problem. All right. Yeah, you know when I uh, when I did jujitsu, I totally underestimated its effects on my recovery. Like I thought, oh yeah, oh I could keep Super lifting, demanding. dude. It's like because you know when you're you're first of all, if you've ever wrestled with someone full speed at, for yeah. five minutes, you're dead, right? So he said 30 minutes. Well, you That'll don't go half you. speed at all. Like you no. go 100%. And that's yeah. the thing about that discipline, which it's, is yeah, you got to consider that in terms of your recoverability. It's very demanding. And I was just lifting too much. It took me a while to figure out, like, I got to do less. And then when I did less, I got stronger mm -hmm. and I felt better. So it wasn't like I did less and got less. I got better results as a result of it. And a lot of people who do this kind of training, they want to do everything all at once. And it doesn't it doesn't work out better that way. Strength training, one of the beauties of it is that you don't need to do a lot of it to get great results from it. As long as you send the signal, yeah. you're going to get some strength and muscle from it. And for some people, depending on what they're doing, once a week is plenty. You know, yeah. Right? yeah, it's interesting. I keep looking at our base three, um, you know, uh, programs, our aesthetic and anabolic and performance, and it's like it's really you can identify almost anybody into like very much one of those is going to speak to them the loudest, and that's like your hub, that's your yeah. homeostasis, and then you can branch out a bit, uh, you know, based on what your body wants to experience and kind of stretch the capacity. But you know, for him, it's very much it speaks. You know, Maps performance is really going to help him out. The the biggest challenge he's going to have, and I, and I love that Sal said it, and I'm just going to reiterate it because it, the the idea of doing what you can tolerate versus what's best for you is where he'll have the biggest challenge. I mean, because somebody like this, who's got the discipline that he has, the consistency, he may feel like, Oh, I could easily do two days or three days and to, I can handle it. Yeah. And yeah. he, and he probably would, he'd probably do it and, and be fine and be okay. But understanding that doing what your body can tolerate and doing what is optimal for it are two different things. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, learning to dance that dance, I think will be the, the greatest challenge for him of, of being objective and going like, okay, yeah, I know I'm doing two times a week and I'm okay, mm -hmm. but am, am I, is this what's optimal? And mm -hmm. if I were to scale back to one, would I see even better performance and feel even better at my job? That's, I think that's, I mean, that's taken me years and years and I still feel like totally. I, you know, am, am always trying to work that out. So that'll be his biggest challenge. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.